What else? What, you don't have anything else on the agenda, do you? Uh, no, what you see there. I need to talk a little extra in new business on the, uh, this building's uh, COVID security plan. This thing? This thing. Just lock all the doors. All right, sir. I understand. It's cra crazy out there right now. What's crazy? Everything. Any updates on that pipe? Okay. You know what? It happens every year. And I don't know if it happens have, to everybody. If you don't mind, handle that and let me know. I, I shovel my own. Figure out what our game plan is. And I, frankly, I kind of enjoy it. I think it's the. <laughs> well, and it's, the, it's the German in me. I like to, I like to see the straight lines at yeah. the end of my drive and everything. And this year, my neighbor bought a snowblower. And he said, he said, he said, I can, I can do yours and mine in uh, five minutes. And so he's been doing my stuff. Well, he didn't do my driveway. And I just never, oh, it's it time. never clicked with me that we just, we just well, give me my this. microphone. You know? And uh, <laughs> yesterday I went to leave the house. And I thought, geez, I've got four or five inches in some place. So yeah, I went and chipped out at about two thirds of my driveway clean. But, Okay. Yeah, got a complaint. Yeah. Gentlemen, I believe I'm going to, at the, this, the time being 10 a.m. or 10.01, I'm going to call the meeting of the Kane County Administration Committee. My name is Chris Caius. I'm the chairman. And, uh, for Wednesday, February 10th, 2021. And we have a uh, roll call, please. Berman. Berman here. Davist. Davist here. Ford. Fries. Fries here. Gums. Gums here. Shepro. Martin. Martin present. Caius. Caius present. Thank you. Item of business will be to accept the uh, approval of the minutes from December 9th, 2020 and January 13th, 2021. Uh, Gums moves to approve. Martin Gums seconds. Will is moves. Uh, Martin second. And uh, I will just make a note that there were some minor changes that I submitted this morning about uh, names, but it didn't alter the more Scribner's errors than anything. So there should be a slight change, but not much. Are there any other uh, comments about the minutes from the last meeting or from December 9th? Hearing none, seeing none, uh, roll call to accept, please. Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford here. Thank you. Fries? Fries, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Thank you. And welcome, Madam Chairman, or Chairperson. Okay, uh, item three, financial report. Is there, do we have someone here to present on the finance report? If not, uh, then it's indicated that it is attached. So please refer to the agenda and the appendix. Anyone here for public comment? I don't think we have anybody submit anybody online or on the phone. <coughs> okay, nobody in the chambers. Moving right along. Facilities management. I think this is the Christopher Hansen 
Allen. Oh, uh, Christopher Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Allen. Uh, gee whiz. That's all right, I'll sir. I'll get it. <laughs> well, if it pleases the chair and the committee, I'd like to start with the capital projects update of the multi-use facility with a presentation. Excellent. Pleases me. All right, uh, sir, next slide, please. Again, that's the uh, architectural rendering of what the facility is to look like when we are complete, and it actually looks a lot like that right now. Next slide, please. Okay, this is where the a picture of the current uh, progress, as you can see, this is recent here with the snow. Um, the the exteriors or, uh, work is all done. Obviously, we'll have to, uh, towards the end of the project, we'll go back and do some touch up and repainting as needed. Next slide, please. That's current state of the salt dome. It's not real exciting at this point, um, but it is a salt dome. Next slide, please, sir. All right, now we're gonna go into the uh, interiors here. There's been a lot of progress on the interiors. And this is the coroner's office uh, exam room. As you can see, there's space for, we'll have three uh, tables in there. Um, that rather strange looking silver a uh, piece of mechanical equipment is an additional HVAC for scrubbing the air quality in there. Pending questions, we'll go to the next slide. Again, uh, I want to point out that the uh, epoxy work in the uh, corners area is near 100% complete. You can look at the floors and how they, they're very shiny. Next slide, please. This is uh, another exam room in the coroner's office um, for biohazard exams. It's a special uh, area. And over in the upper right, you can see that piece of plywood there. That is actually where a scale is going to be uh, when, they, when they bring the people in. Next slide, please. Okay, these uh, pictures are of the freezers and the coolers. You can obviously look at the, the square foot of, of what they have are going to have. Um, it's a considerable asset to the coroner's office and upgrade for sure. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the coroner's area sally port where they'll be able to bring in vehicles and um, transport items in and out from outside into the building. Next slide, please. This is the record storage area. It's approximately um, 5,000 square feet. You can uh, look at the scope of what we'll be able to move forward to uh, in supporting of the other departments. Next slide, please, sir. This, yes, Madam Chair. Hi, um, can you go back to the slide about the storage area? What kind of racks are gonna be up there? Are they gonna be racks because we have very high ceilings, so I assume they're gonna be go all the, all the way up on top. Are they gonna be- Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go with pallet racking as high as we can safely, obviously, and then uh, we'll need the additional forklift support going forward, moving equipment up and down. So basically the walls, we, what I don't have is an overview uh, layout, but we'll, we'll have two workstations in there. Right now, one for slated for IT, uh, an IT member and another one slated for a building management member as we're controlling assets coming in and out and being brought in, you know, from vendors being labeled and then sent out to the buildings for to support. And we'll be able to consolidate a lot of uh, the building management equipment that's scattered across the uh, county and store it in there and get it out of the weather. So this is not for paper archives, this is for equipment? It, th there was discussion of that down the road and in the future, if other departments need area to store, this is where we would, we would do our best to accommodate that, okay. that request. Okay. okay, thank you. Yes. Next slide, please. Okay, this is, we're gonna do a little before and after shot here, the, the maintenance area. This area, um, to the left, you'll see a little wall there. That's gonna be the power washing area for the uh, sheriff's vehicles or county vehicles. And then over to the right, you see a lot of over, large overhead doors. There's gonna be four lifts in that area for uh, doing vehicle maintenance. This project is providing two new lifts and we'll be moving the two current lifts that are out at the fleet maintenance area to this project. Okay. Pending any questions, we'll, next slide, please. That's uh, what it looks like as of just last night. This is the uh, 
epoxy floor, the first coat, similar, same product that, that's used over in the sheriff's office. And this is rated for these uh, the sheriff's large vehicles to go on and off. It, this is a standard uh, material uh, used in and specced out in fire departments. So got, we've got a good product here. Next, question, next slide, please. Okay, this is a top view of the uh, sheriff's mezzanine. Uh, it's an additional storage area or training area, uh, almost 6,400 square feet added with this mezzanine. So it's a, it's a really nice uh, add to have in that space. And obviously you can see the lighting in there. It's very bright, very strong and efficient. Court training as well, it's just like- well, yes, you know, however, the, however the sheriff wants to use it, that they've got the space. Yep. Um, next slide, please. So this is a picture of the, uh, the railing up top on the, the mezzanine, obviously for safety. And you can see up in the upper right, there are swinging doors up there so they can open that up and they can forklift material up there and they don't have to necessarily carry it up on the stairs. So that's, that's an efficiency. Next slide, please. Just uh, pictures of hot water heaters and other mechanicals uh, upstairs in the mezzanine. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the sheriff's vehicle storage area. Obviously, you saw in previous slides it is now epoxied. Or this area, I apologize, this area is being prepped to be epoxied. Um, this is a very large space where they can bring in their equipment and get it out of the elements and do whatever they need with that space. Next slide, please. More, just another shot from another angle. So again, it's a very large space. Next slide, please. Facilities management area. This will be the facilities management uh, wash bay to the left and to the right is maintenance and area. Next slide, please. So this is some cabinetry that's going into the facilities maintenance or management area. Uh, so the mill work has started uh, in these spaces. Next slide, please. I believe that actually is the last slide. Yeah, yeah, that's the last slide. So pending any other questions, I'll continue on with the facilities management portion and pro capital project updates. Yeah. Davis, you're uh, here with a question. Any questions, Mr. Davis? <clears throat> I, I think last month we had talked a little bit about, uh, I mean, I, I love the pictures that you've got for us here, but uh, we had talked a little about before and after, not just of the progress in the new one, but having a record of the facilities that are in current use, so that when we present this to the world, you can we can show them. Here's what it looks like inside the coroner's office now, and what they're working with. Here's what it's going to be. Same thing with storage, with sheriff's office, with equipment that now sits outside. I think it'd be great to have, you know, a a record of all of those things, so that we can show them side by side you know, what's being accomplished here to make it, you know, very clear to everybody how badly the improvements were needed and how much better this is going to be. Absolutely. I've all, uh, all, I have already spoke with the coroner about when they get uh, some stuff moved out in areas are better accessible. I'll go in there and take pictures as well as the current uh, building management offices out at Fabian and areas that the sheriff stores their equipment. Right. And anything that's, being covered by this new facility, let's let's show them what the the current status is. Absolutely. Would you like to see that in the next uh, month's meeting, or wait till the end? But yeah, uh, just just so we don't miss it. It's yeah, oh, absolutely. I understand, sir. Comment by Froz. Mr. Froz. Yeah, I I want to thank Mark for those comments because you know as I'm looking at those beautiful, well lit, you know, epoxy floored areas and uh, you know I, I wish the entire board could see for example where the bomb squad is and has been uh in a in a pole barn that's unheated so you know last night when it was below zero all of that battery powered equipment they use the robots and all their equipment is below zero and uh you know raccoons climbing in through the holes in the ceiling and uh things <laughs> like that so it's just just an absolute um it's just such a joy to see all of this. And, and again, our, our employees have not complained all that much um, about these facilities and uh, that, that facilities maintenance uh, section you saw, that's the first time ever that they'll have an actual uh, you know, planned base of operations. Uh, so th this is really exciting. 
And Mr. Fraz is our representative from the board during the construction. So congratulations to you, Mr. Fraz. Yeah, it's, it's just so fun at this stage to see all this uh, finish going in now and uh, things have just gone so well. Or As a side note to the multi-use facility, um, we are gonna start the grand opening slash open house planning this Thursday. So we're ahead of, ahead of the curve and we're gonna uh, meet with our representatives of the coroner's office, the sheriff's department, building management is, is obviously me. So um, we're gonna get that going so we have an outstanding uh, plant events with insight. Great. It is with insight. It is. We need to get on this. <clears throat> then, Mr. I don't, Martin, I don't have anything. No comment, Mr. Martin. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Oh, board. I had a comment. Uh, Madam, Madam Chairman. Um, oh. I, I, I'm just curious. Does the county have a deaccession policy uh, for unneeded materials, uh, equipment, and paper? To my knowledge, that if you're going to um, take something out of service that goes through the purchasing office, i.e. get rid of equipment, vehicles, that kind of thing. I believe that goes through the purchasing office. And archives, paper archives? I, I can't speak to that, ma'am. Um, I just know that there's a lot of paper. Say, for example, the coroner's office has to, by law, keep a, a death record, and they have those files from beginning of time with King County. And that's definitely something that we're aware of. I'm sure that every other department has <laughs> records uh, requirements as well. Um, I, yes, I understand that. And I know that those are important, but oftentimes there's paper that may not be needed. And as we move into this beautiful new area, um, I think you're gonna have it filled up rather quickly. <laughs> so perhaps that may be something that is reviewed and discussed before materials go into that, um, into that facility, because we know that there's gonna be, it's future use as well. So you wanna make sure that not only are you bringing in the old paper, um, paper archives, but there is room for any additional new ones, or are they gonna be digitized, <clears throat> which I know is an additional expense. Yes, ma'am. Something to think about. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Ford, did you have a comment? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I actually uh, am pretty proud of this uh, facility, what's been done by Fraz and and, um, and everybody else. Um, I, I remember visiting the existing coroner's office uh, a few years ago for the first time I got on the board, and this is a huge difference. I mean, this is more humane uh, facility for our employees than what we had before. Just two thoughts. Uh, one is, are we using LED lighting? And the other one, uh, any backup generators uh, do we have? Yes, sir, I can speak to that. Yes, the, the lighting is as efficient in LED. And as far as a backup generator, there is currently an installed backup generator out there that was part of this project that will cover the entire facility should there be a need. All right. And I don't know if Mr. Fraz has anything to add to that about the energy efficiency and the LED lighting. Yeah, well, it's a state-of-the-art uh, facility. And uh, as you remember, there was discussion about solar. So we've made the roof. Uh, the, the structure entirely has been made strong enough to accommodate solar. Uh, if we want to do that as an additional project in the future, especially if we get some uh, grant money. But no, it's a very energy efficient building. Everything's state-of-the-art as far as that. Great. Everything except geothermal, but <laughs> a long story there. Yeah. Long <laughs> okay. We ain't going back. The, uh, okay. Any other questions or comments about the multi-use facility? All right, sir. Thank you. Um, as per the last meeting, I briefed uh, updates on uh, all the uh, budgeted capital projects that are under uh, purview of building management. And I, at this time, I'd like to go through this list rather quickly and provide uh, the committee an update. Mm -hmm. So the building A elevator renovation project is now in design. So we're moving forward with that at light speed. Uh, the building B, um, Lower roof replacement right next door over here, the IT building. Uh, I'm waiting to uh, get our new A&E firms uh, approved, and then I'll assign that work to uh, one of those firms. 
Um, the building C uh, updates, the uh, rooftop units were placed on the top uh, February 2nd, and they're in the process of, they, they had them running and now we're working through some glitches, which just causes some temperature concerns, but uh, we're working through that. It's a very complex project and that's, that's what happens unfortunately sometimes. Uh, the coroner's office uh, demolition, Again, I'm waiting for uh, the new A&E firms to be established before I award uh, that project. And uh, I would also like to recommend that when we're doing the uh, capital projects of the coroner's office and Fabian building road management that we work this in with the new uh, green building policy and that we look at how we're gonna do this uh, to be environmentally sound and as well as look at future remediation that we can do out there and enclose, encapsulate in this, these two demolition projects. So that way we're, you know, we're, we're being environmentally friendly and we need to do that cleanup anyway of anything left behind. Um, the parking lots and seal coating crack feeling, again, we're uh, with Mr. Griffith and I, we're under a review and doing assessments of what, what actually makes sense. And uh, when we get a new firm in, I'm gonna, uh, ask for a CPI to be done, which is a, a paving index. So that way we rank file and order uh, the priorities within the county and that way we're moving forward with a better, clearer vision of what, what is required of us. Uh, same thing with the sidewalks. The CARES Act projects at all of the King County buildings were about 90% complete. And the holdup on that is we're waiting on the, the arrival of back ordered materials and equipment. Uh, basically the whole world is looking for this stuff and we're in line fighting with them, but we're, we're moving forward to every chance we get <laughs> and properly. And that's all I have in reference to capital projects update, pending any questions. Mr. Barton. I I have a question, yes. Um, relative to the uh, the Fabian Road property, when I've been out there, there have been remnants of the old jail and the other stuff that you can still kind of see. Is that, are we as far as we're going to go with that pending <coughs> determination of use of that property or is there still stuff to do? Relative, I mean, I know I know that the maintenance building is being taken down and I know that the, the old sheriff's office is being taken down. I'm presuming that the, the old Pole buildings, pole buildings, and coon nests are going to be taken down. Is there anything other, anything else that will remain that we're going to have to do in the future? Yes, sir. That's my intent. Um, as I uh, basically um, gave the uh, fifty thousand foot view over, is then when we get these new firms in, uh, we're going to do a really thorough deep dive into this property and figure out what we can do now and what we can do in phases. Okay, it really needs to be cleaned up. There's areas that need some some love and attention for sure. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other comments? I have a comment on uh, item five, the coroner's demolition. Okay, Mr. Frost. Um, I just wanna go on record, the, the coroner and the chief deputy coroner are both fighting over who gets to take the first swing of the wrecking ball on the uh, <laughs> demolition. So. Uh, um, I think uh, I'll ask Mr. Allen when he when he awards the contract to make that a, a part of the agreement with the contractor. <laughs> Flip a coin. I, I do believe that. Uh, Bring two sledgehammers. One of the chief deputies has volunteered for bulldozer training, and yes. uh, <laughs> we'll see Thank what you. we can do to accommodate. By all means. I Thank you, question. Mr. Frost. Uh, any other questions from members of the committee or? other board members that are listening. The, the question on the parking lots, the car, parking lot repairs, you're going to be, I'm, I, that was a little bit muffled for me. You were saying you're, you're going to be designing or, or uh, planning long-term. Yes, um, again, sort of like uh, with the um, facilities assessments that I've discussed in the past and the master plan or the long-term plan, it, we can have a separate plan as well uh, created in reference to all our, our, our parking lots, our sidewalks, any paving, and that will put us on a, a very precise uh, course and allow us to figure out how we're gonna budget and prioritize that work to be done. Long range plan. Yes, it is. 
will be yes, know what the next step is going to be when it arrives it's, it's, or before it, it arrives it essentially you know the, the question comes to me or, or mr griffiths is what's next on the list we go to the list and say we did this and then it you know it gets updated every year as we start taking these projects off and then it also puts us on a maintenance plan so we know when and where we what? a maintenance plan we know when and where what we can do internally in reference patching seal coating things of that nature and then as far as the CARES Act, uh, you said that they're, uh, we're just finishing up with the CARES Act, we're back order on things. Is there anything specific you'd like to mention in that or is there? No, we're, we're moving along very well. And we'll do th the thing I would really like to point out is I appreciate all the uh, facilities staff uh, or the staff members in these facilities because <coughs> it has been operationally challenging at many times, you know, because when you're doing certain levels of work, say for example, work in the ceilings, people kind of have to vacate. And um, it's and I know it's been kind of uh, a significant in inconvenience, but uh, as far, far as I'm concerned, everybody's been very supportive. They understand the work needs to be done and uh, we're going forward and uh, we're really building some new relationships that way as well. Great. Any other questions, Mr. Allen? Yeah, I have still maybe another comment. Davis, um, Mr. Davis, go ahead. You know, as the conversation turns to long-term planning and strategy, um, I think we have to, at least in the back of our minds, begin to factor in the concept of whether it's, you know, whether the long-term plan remains at that site or a transition to the Judicial Center campus. And that, that could have some effect on the decision-making on, you know, which things you do or, and don't do. Correct, sir. When we get the um, master plan and the facilities plan developed, that's when we can sit down and review the uh, strategies moving forward. And, you know, that'll tell us whether or not it makes sense to continue to, say, for example, uh, fund capital projects on this campus or at any particular building or all the buildings. So we'll, that, that allows us to have a better informed true information to, to, to make precise uh, decisions going forward. Great. Does that answer that, Mr. Davis? Yep. Great, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Um, I hate to be such a newbie. This is Mavis Bates. May okay. I ask who's giving this report? It's Chris Allen speaking, is that Chris the Allen. question? Oh, Chris, oh, is that you? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Well, it's either Chris Hansen or Chris Allen. I'm not sure. I confused it a little bit at the beginning there. I'll, I'll be Chris Allen today if that's okay. Allen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're going to hire some guy named that, that with that name. The, um, okay. Any other questions for Mr. Allen? Chris, Chris. Oh, then I apologize. Thank and, and, and thank you very much. Uh, the item, next item uh, is a resolution authorizing an agreement for architect, engineer, and construction management at risk services <clears throat> at, for at risk services contracts. And that would again be you. Yes, sir. So a uh, quick overview on this is that our current uh, contracted uh, a &E firm is the terms of that contract are expiring. They are currently on a, an extension to June, but we still needed per the, the proper purchasing processes, uh, put out an RFP. We had 13 fine firms, uh, submit their responses. Uh, it was through a panel. It was worked down to five outstanding firms. I want to say up front that I'd be honored to work with any of those five. But at this time, I'm uh, bringing to, the, to you, Mr. Chair, and the, the committee a recommendation for three firms. Um, The uh, three firms that I'm bringing forward on the list of five would be White & Company, Healy Bender, Patton & Bean, Inc., and HOK for your consideration and review. And those are in the resolution for those members? That yes, they are. They're listed uh, rank ordered and the procurement synopsis provided by uh, purchasing. In paragraph two. Okay. Well, I'll entertain a motion to authorize an agreement for this architecture. Mr. Chairman, you're losing your mic. I'll entertain a motion. Resolution. 
Davis moves. Yeah, Davis seconds or moves either. <laughs> who, who moved? Us, who thought we moved? Fries. Fries. Fries moved. Davis second, I think. I'll I'll take your word for it. <laughs> it got jumbled here. Okay. Is there any comments or questions? Um, Mr. Chairman, may I speak? Bates, Bates. here. Bates. Um, pursuant to the brand new uh, sustainability uh, Kane County Green Building Policy uh, in section two, uh, oops, I've got it read underlined here. Section four, A one, uh, this says purchasing department shall include a requirement for lead accreditation and certified energy management and the request for qualifications for architectural services and ensure that the project team has the qualifications to meet the green building policy. So I, I request that any architects that we hire are lead certified as in our brand new plan. Okay, we, do you have a comment, Mr. I'll go back and look at uh, the, the, that particular qualification, which was not, I don't believe it was not part of the original grading criteria. Um, but I would, I would tell you this, that uh, Mrs. Wolnick was on the panel of uh, the, the scores when it came down to these projects. So that process or that mindset was already included. Well, we don't wanna miss any opportunities no, and, and, and you know, are. as good question, and in collaboration with uh, the other departments that would be involved with the use of these A and E firms, is that would be something I would definitely be looking at at all turns. Is that any any des future design or any of that kind of thing would be environment friendly and also looking for those credentials? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, we just passed this last week, so we changed the rules a little bit up from underneath yeah, yeah. you. I'm sorry to say, but they should be. Lead certified. Thank you. Uh, okay. Well, I'm not sure how that. It, I'll entertain in, input on how that might change things. Mr. Brown, do you have a comment? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Chris, could you explain why you chose or your your panel chose to go with three different firms on this rather than sticking with one to do it all? So in the RFP, there was uh, a set uh, requirements that the uh, respondents had to address. And then uh, during the interview process, there was a series of questions that were asked and then they were graded uh, per the individual panel members uh, understanding of how, how well they grasped the concepts of what the county was looking for and moving forward. So you're, you're thinking is that possibly based on the project that you're gonna put in front of whomever, there may be one firm that's more qualified than the other to handle that particular project? Yeah, so, so how, how this will work is they don't tell us who's doing the work for us. We decide who we're gonna assign the projects to per their sp particular qualifications and uh, specialties. Okay, thank you. thank you. That way it gives us an option. That's why we have three. Three. So we're not, um, we, we have that levity to, to, to assign the work. And potentially if we lose one, we still have two. And uh, per the resolution, we uh, there's language in the resolution that if we need to add anybody, we can go back to this original list of five and choose from there. All right. Okay, Mr. Martin. Uh, can I have the, uh, the excuse me the composition of the panel that reviewed this? It was myself, Mr. Fonzak, and uh, Ms. Walnut. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else on the board? Ms. Madam Chairman. Could you tell us a little bit about these companies, where they're located, a um, little history, <clears throat> knowledge about them? I can uh, do a quick overview on that. So um, these companies are primarily local. They're also very, a couple of them are very large in nature, so they can provide a wide, wider range of services. Um, for, for our requirements. Um, uh, so White and Company are of Darien, Illinois. Healy, Bender, and Patton are of Naperville. And Helmuth 
and uh, I mean, and HOK are from Chicago, Chicago, Illinois. So again, they are local companies. Um, one of the, the considerations is that we support our communities when, when we look at uh, these kind of large kind of contracts. So does that answer your question, ma'am? Yes, um, and can you please explain to me what is it, uh, I understand obviously what an architect is, engineer, what is construction manager at risk services? So they oversee the projects to a certain level uh, for us or sort of like uh, currently out at the multi-use facility, the contractor provides a superintendent who is there on site all the time, um, providing direction, uh, arranging for uh, deliveries, things of that nature. Whereas somebody from the county is wearing multiple hats and can't, just can't take on that, that level of detail of work. Answer the question. Madam Chairman, uh, Davis with a, a comment. I, I can tell you that it doesn't surprise me to see White and Company, you know, I guess at the top of this list, um, they have tremendous historical knowledge of our efforts at the county. They've done a lot of, a lot of work for us and, um, over the years and, and know, you know, the, the projects that we've done before and have looked at doing in the, in the future. Uh, very, very well. So. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. And I have uh, just one more. Sure. Um, are, do these companies represent a diverse population? I can't. It's not, I'm not, obviously that's not a mandate, but um, diversity is very important in hiring. Uh, so. I, I can't answer for that to that right now, ma'am, but I can definitely get that answer for you. That would be great. Thank you. As, as say, for example, um, with currently with our multi-use facility, they when they were going out and, and gaining bids from the contractors, they were very focused on uh, local support. And there are the, the contractors, there are state laws that they must have, uh, uh, adhere to as well. Chairman, this is Roger. Roger, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I, I just did some quick looking for Chris on the architects and all three of them have lead uh, accredited professional architects on staff. So just for the record, all three are lead, lead accredited. That's great. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Roger. Yep. It's Roger. Make sure, make sure we get that guy, please. <laughs> I'll see Old what woman. I can do, make sure. Yeah, well, we're, we're, their committee's gonna be committed to it. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, any other questions that you might have? Board members? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Deborah Allen. Uh, Ms. Allen. Uh, just a question for Mr. Allen, spelled the other way. Um, <laughs> nor normally our contracts are maybe 250 to $300,000 a year. And I'm noticing that this is 450,000. Is that because of the, uh, uh, your interest in doing the master plan study that you're building in the extra money? And am I correct that this is an up to amount? That, that includes ma'am two years worth of uh, design work for us. Um, I believe uh, the first year would be 300 and the second year is 150. Okay, I'm sorry, the, the, um, the resolution or the, um, the, uh, uh, the first page, uh, the summary explaining the resolution says 450,000 annually. So that confused me. Okay, I'll have to go back and look into that ma'am and I owe you an answer. No problem, thanks. Thank you. Body of the resolution says for a two-year contract, I believe. We're three re one-year renewables. And it says 450,000 per year. Per each year. Yeah, that each it year. does need to be cleaned up a little there. Okay. Or 
first, we're building in a larger uh, request for services. Um, maybe that is a, a, an acceptable amount. I just wanted to clarify it. And it's always an it's always an up to up so to. you don't have to spend all of that money. It's just there if you need it when the crisis yeah. occurs. Maybe a not to exceed uh, language and clarification on the uh, on the two year period. Is that something we need to amend at this time? Or amendment to the resolution? It looks like it. Well, then I would entertain, entertain a motion from someone to uh, modify that. Can you have a suggestion for how that yeah. would read, Mr. Allen or Mr. Uh, Fonstock? Mr. Chairman, it, that first Pardon? sentence uh, ref, uh, refers to combined funds, uh, which obviously I understand what it means, but it's definitely not looking at it at a second glance. It is not as clear as it could be, as some of the committee members have uh, mentioned. So I am definitely uh, uh, up for amending as needed. So there is clarity for all the board members and they feel comfortable. Mr. Martin. Mr. Chairman, I'm always uncomfortable doing amendments as we sit in a meeting. And yeah. I think this is gonna course through finance or through yeah, finance, is it not? Yes. yes. So why don't we just as a consensus give direction to Chris to work that clear that because these are not clarifications of substance this is just to clarify something make those corrections and present them at, at the finance committee so they so he's had a chance to look at it and see the document but I, i'm just always uncomfortable absolutely redrafting documents by committee always good sage advice thank you mr martin mr chairman ford yes mr ford uh the way this looks it looks like these uh, contracts can be up to five years, two years with three additional one-year options for renewal? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is Roger. Yes, Mr. Fonstock. Just uh, for uh, clarity, in the now, therefore, be it resolved, the resolving part, it mm -hmm. should also resolve the uh, portion of the uh, resolution that it, that uh, says there are additional uh, options or additional year options, that should be a part of the res resolution part too at the last paragraph. And, and at what rate for each additional one year term? Yeah, you, you should in the, in the now therefore be it resolved, there should be a statement about the optional renewals. Three yes. additional one year optional renewal. Yes, it should be included in the re resolved part. Otherwise, you're just agreeing to a two year term. I can have that added and amended. Yeah. So then I will ask the committee for a consensus of to, to uh, modify this resolution or pass it on and have it uh, modified for the next committee, which would be finance. And that would include, if you, if you have a, did you make a list of that, or what it is you'll, what will we be changing? Yes, I've been uh, red penning the, the current resolution okay. in front of me. And then uh, could you read it back to us? Yes, sir. Um, well, there's one, two, three, four. And the eighth, whereas I need to clarify for finance uh, the, the funding years. And in the final, now, therefore, I need to uh, add language for the additional option years. Okay. Does that sound reasonable, Mr. Ponstock? Yes. That's what we're looking for, Mr. Martin. Okay, then I'll consider uh, it done. I'll ex uh, I'm looking for a nod or something to, or somebody say no, if they don't agree with this, we'll have the, uh, we'll pass it on and vote on it as it uh, stands with the uh, understanding that uh, we will see those changes in those paragraphs that read very, something like that to accommodate that, those, uh, that information. Sound reasonable? Nods? Yeah. Yes. Um, just yes. one, one additional question. Um, yes. Mr. So that's Mr. Davis. Uh, yes, established here. Um, yes. So essentially, adding the not to exceed and defining the four hundred fifty thousand as being for the two-year period. 
when we make reference to the additional one year options or th you know three of those at do we do we know at what rate you know is, is it at the 300,000 is it the 150 because the the initial two year period is broken into you know sort of two separate amounts although it's not laid out here um, so each one year additional that's available are we going to assign a number dollar value to those I could provide a recommendation in this uh, resolution uh, and the uh, draft language to that, but um, at this time, I don't think those funds have been budgeted. So I don't know if that brings on a future concern. That would limit the scope of the work. It, the it might, it may, I, I just I just wanted to address how, how we're addressing the idea that there's, you know, that we can, go into three additional one year terms because somebody's going to want to know for how much. I, I understand where, where the, we're going with this and I can definitely uh, add, add language to the effect of that. And um, I don't think I would actually be uh, limited in scope of, of work because I could always ask for a budget adjustment potentially, Mr. Caius, if we need to. Yeah, I think that's part of the. And if we don't use it, we but give it back. We don't use it, it doesn't. We don't. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't. give it back or carry it over. This is Roger again. I just want to make sure. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Ponstock. Um, if I'm clear on what uh, Mr. Davis said, he's saying 250 or two, it'd be $225,000 per year, or was it $450,000 per year for Mr. Allen? You're describing it as like half of the 450. It would be yeah, 220. My understanding is 225 per year for a two-year contract, which would be 450, and then extensions beyond that of same amount. The same Two, amount. 225,000. Can you put as appropriate, or as as yet to be determined by the board, so we don't have a, a finite language in there? I'm not sure what we had in the past. It would usually be yeah. not to exceed. Not, would it be a problem? Since it's not to exceed, then it, whatever pick, number we pick, would, it just wouldn't go over that. I think if and, you know, again, that, if that's emergency. a common approach that gives you latitude, you know, but if we don't, it caps it. if we don't put the, excuse me, Mr. Martin, we don't put a, if we don't put a figure in there that gives us predictability, then we, we may not have a, a binding contract so that the not to exceed deals with that issue. But if we just say, right. uh, if we have something more vague, then the answer is we don't have a contract. We have an agreement to agree. And that's not a contract. Right. I okay. And I think in the past it has identified the number, the amount, it wasn't a 200,000 a year. Is, yeah. That's what you're saying is it, it will have the, I'm the just saying, let's just put, let's, let's agree upon a, a reasonable figure now to say not to exceed. And if, and if something comes up that we go haywire on that, it'll have to come back to the board, but we do need to have a, a number in there to create a binding obligation. Mr. Chairman, this is Roger again, Mr. Fonstock. So you would say um, a two year agreement not to exceed $225,000 per year with an option for three one-year renewals. And you could also include with, you know, an annual not to exceed 225,000, but the, all the options would come back to committee and the full board. You, you cannot renew an option or a contract like that without the board's approval anyway. So what, what I'm gonna be focusing on then is the two base years of not to exceed 225 a year. And then again, as Roger mentioned, then if we do do an extension, it'd come to the board with a set price then. Yeah, the difference is you wouldn't have to go out and do the RFP if you exercise the option to renew. You still have to have a resolution to obligate the board to the not to exceed $225,000 within a fiscal year. I like that. I think that solved our problem. Uh, this is Alan again. It's Alan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a suggestion that uh, Chris take a look 
at what was spent the last couple of years. Um, the not to exceed amount, I believe, crept up because there were so many projects that were going on. Um, I know you, no one has a crystal ball here, but you might want to give yourself a little more room than the 225 based on the past couple of years experience. Uh, just a suggestion, thank you. Very good point, Mrs. Allen. Um, so if I understand what she's saying, she's recommending that we make a higher number and if we use it, we'd use it. And if we don't, we don't. That way it gives us more latitude not to have to come back and ask for more. Higher than the 225 per year. Just, just based on the most recent experience so that you have that wiggle room if you need it. Mm -hmm. I think our last, as I recall, maybe Mr. Martin has better recollection than I, we've had, uh, the last contract we've had was 200,000 a year. Is that correct? You think, you remember that Mr. Martin? I, I you remember? can't remember the amount. Does it sound reasonable then to uh, include that as, to have the next committee adopt that with with the recommendation from Mr. Allen. So are we talking to language uh, referencing maybe uh, 300 a year or 375 or three, whatever, whatever price point we want to put? Uh, again, it, you know, I think giving us, as Madam Chair uh, recommending, giving us better latitude would definitely be of benefit. Mm -hmm. Reasonable, Mr. Frost. I was going to say I would I would go with the three hundred thousand per year. Per year, yes, sir. Okay, then That's I'm just looking a... for a consensus. Oh, Mr. Ford, did you have a comment? Yeah, I, I, I would agree with Frost. You just need to remember and just need to say not to exceed three hundred thousand. All yeah, not to exceed. Okay, well that sounds reasonable to me, and I'll again ask for nodding. In consensus that we that's that's sounds we're good. Pass this and sounds then that's good to me. What we'll pass on. Okay. Great. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none. Seeing none in the room. Uh, we can vote on this then. Roll call, please. Berman. Berman, yes. Davis. There we go. Ford? Davis, yes. Thank you. Mr. Ford? Yes. Fries? Fries, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Yes. Thank you. And now we'll move on. We'll move on to information technology. That would be you, Mr. Fonstock. Roger Fonstock. And we have uh, one resolution this morning for authorizing approval of personnel hiring for information technologies department. We need a motion for that. Davis and Pros. Pros seconds. Davis and Pros. So, Mr. Chairman, the resolution you have is for um, hiring a uh, vacant desktop support analyst one position. And it is uh, a position that uh, we had a person um, resign from, from our department. So we're looking to fill that in the summary. It describes the position, I think at $45,000. It's a budgeted position for fiscal year 2021. So we're just asking for the, the rehire. I would ask for a uh, motion to uh, amend the resolution. There's a type typographical error in it. Um, in the second, whereas it should be seeks to fill, just says seeks fill. And then in the final paragraph, the now therefore be it resolved, it needs to say the last uh, three, three words, you would strike office assistant and you would put in desktop support analyst one. So it's not, the office assistant was a position from a previous resolution. So it's just a typo. We didn't uh, get that title corrected. I moved so, to amend for those changes. Thank you. Well, it, I think, Fraz and I have to. There's a you have a motion and a second hanging out there. But as the as the original mover, I will amend my motion to include the language changes that Mr. Fanstock just related to us. Fraz agrees. So we have the motion uh, with the agreement from 
Mr. Davis and Mr. Fraz to pass this with those understood uh, typographical errors corrected. Is there any comments or questions about this? Hearing none, see no uh, roll call, please. Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Fraz? Fraz, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Mr. Fraunstock? Oh, did you yes, say sir. thank you? Yes, I said thank oh. you. We have no oh. other business for committee <laughs> okay. this morning. Thanks. And that's my question, I guess. Then. Yeah. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. Plonstock. Yep. Appreciate it. And then on to uh, Mill Creek SSA, a resolution authorizing a contract for landscape maintenance services for Mill Creek SSA. In, uh, entertain a motion. Fraz moves. Fraz moves. Ford seconds. Ford second. Back to Mr. Allen. Yes, sir. So, um, the Mill Creek SSA, as you know, is its own special entity, special service area. Um, the residents out there pay an assessed additional fee or tax uh, to have services uh, out there managed by Kane County Building Management. And the current contractor um, is, the term of that contract is coming to an end. So we needed to put on RFP requesting for uh, bidders to submit their bids in reference to the landscaping contract and provided services out there. We received uh, five total proposals and uh, grading and scoring was done per the RFP requirements and the top scoring vendor was Cornerstone Partners uh, Horticultural Services Company, which is currently the contractor we have now. So my recommendation would be that we uh, award Cornerstone with a new contract for the SSA services. Any comments or questions? I, I would just add, this is Fries. I would just add that the, uh, the SSA advisory board and, and I think uh, our, our staff have all been very satisfied with Cornerstone. They've been with us for quite a while and they know the subdivision and they've been uh, responsive and do quality work. So we're very happy with them. Sounds reasonable. Any other comments or questions? Anybody online? Hearing none. Roll call, please. Berman. Berman, yes. Davis. Davis, yes. Ford. Ford, yes. Fraz. Fraz, yes. Gums. Gums, yes. Shepro. Martin. Martin, yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Thank you. Item eight: vehicles. We, I don't believe we have any, I don't have anything on my agenda. So nothing happening there. Nine, construction. Mr. Allen. I have nothing additional after the previous um, information. Um, but in relation to what we talked about, no, I, I just had a, an afterthought. I don't know if it's appropriate at this time to, to speak of it. Uh, go ahead. Well, in reference to the uh, option years and how much we would spend, uh, I believe we set the, the that at three hundred thousand. I may think now that I'm thinking about it, it, might be a little more prudent to set the first year a little higher, just for the simple fact of the amount of assessment work and uh, detailed planning we're going to be doing. Just a little higher, just in case. Uh, I'm not sure how we do that. We just add that on to the recommendation as it goes. Do, are there uh, questions or comments from the other, anybody else on the committee? Mr. Fraz? Well, if, if, if uh, Chris recommends that and we agree, I guess we could go back and amend our vote, but we would have to do another roll call. I, I would recommend 500 for the first year and 300 for the next year, just to get us through all the, all the uh, monumental tasks we're gonna be looking at as a recommendation just to be safe. Uh, Ford question. Yes, Mr. Ford. Just for that kind of number that 500, can you give us idea what task we're talking about? Yes, sir. We'll be uh, looking at hiring the, the firms to do a master plan, which has been discussed before facilities assessment and the paving index. And those, all those plans are very detailed, very time consuming, 
um, I can see where we would uh, definitely be in a, in a safer place. I mean, we do have 27 facilities. Uh, we have a lot of parking lot. We have a lot of grounds. We have a lot of work to do uh, as far as remediation at multiple locations such as Fabian. I'm just, I'm just thinking the long-term objectives. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's Fries. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris Allen, um, like what has been our average expenditure, you know, per year on architectural services? Do you, do you have a round number, round figure? I'd have to go back and provide a detailed number and accounting for that to this committee. But I mean, it's, it's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yes, yes, it has been. Well, I, I guess, um, I mean, just to open it up, I, I would make a motion to reconsider um, and then go back to that vote and, uh, and uh, provide the numbers as Mr. Allen recommended, which would be 500 first year and 300 for the years thereafter. I'm not sure about the parliamentary procedure on that, but it sounds reasonable. It's a second. I, Mr. Martin, we're we getting in the weeds here. Well, you're beyond my uh, <laughs> my yeah. danger level of the, we're in of the parliamentary weeds. procedure. My inclination would be just to, uh, since the amounts that we had uh, agreed to were uh, not specified, on, were only specified as a, not as a resolution, but as a, uh, a consensus for the amounts that if we uh, modify our consensus to that, um, the uh, uh, increased amount, it wouldn't change the resolution. The resolution we didn't change anyway. It was just the, uh, the uh, consensus. I have a question and I don't like to belabor things, but sure. we were, uh, does this, does this, does this need to be done this month? And there, and I'll tell you why I ask. And that's because we're all kind of throwing numbers around and, and guessing at them. And there's stuff that Chris needs to review to give us, you know, he's, he said that when people ask for annual averages and everything, and I don't want to delay the process, but I don't, I think we would all be served well by having a, a tight viewpoint towards what history has been here. So we're making a decision based on, you know, past practices as well as, well as future estimate. Is, is, does anybody agree with me on that or is that? Uh... Yeah, I guess I... The, the timeline would, would matter to me. I mean, if it doesn't have to be done right away, I, I would agree with that. Parliamentary wise, just did a little double check. Um, we could do that. It has to be done in the same meeting. Um, if we go the other way, then we'd have to do the rescind. Mm -hmm. Mr. Allen. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's the proper parliamentary term, but we could definitely table it this time. I refresh this document and bring back the additional requested information next month. Well, then. If, okay. if, so I, I believe we would have to rescind the motion. We'd have to rescind it then to, to table it. Is I think the the question, the important question was, is there a, uh, how would this affect, if we postpone it a month, how, how would this affect uh, the timeline? Is this a. Uh, well, we still have contracted before? services until June. So that would not affect us as should we have something arise that we need to get uh, in the development. Um, the, I think that we could have that, you know, and of course, you know, the, the, the board process, you know, so from here we'd go to finance and executive and then right. uh, the board. I, I think we would need to get it done next month, um, but I feel s comfortable with, you know, taking the extra time to provide the, the committee members that information they wanted in a proper uh, procedural fashion. That, Mr. Mr. Martin, Chairman, I would. And then I would, I think Drew has already moved to rescind. I would then uh, second that motion. Yeah, we have a motion on the floor. Well, I, I made a motion to reconsider. So I'll, I'll, I'll uh, withdraw my mo earlier motion and I'll make a motion to uh, uh, rescind and table. And I'll second that. Uh, could we please table specifically for how long? Is this a 30 day till the next yeah, meeting? Thir table for 30 days, rescind our vote and table for 30 days and reconsider at that point. Okay, yeah, I have a motion okay. from Mr. Fraz to- Drew, you, you meant to the next scheduled meeting of this yeah, committee, right? Yeah, the next right? scheduled meeting. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, thank you. 
It might be 31 days. The, uh, I'll, I'll do, I, ha, I have a motion on the floor to rescind and, and uh, we'll just take that one first. Uh, and then a second by Mr. Frost, then a second by Mr. Martin. And uh, I will take that uh, under discussion. Any discussion about rescinding this? Mr. Brown. Maybe not at all. Maybe not necessarily directly about rescinding it, but I'm just questioning as we're reconsidering this, um, and there's a lot of numbers be thrown around which are higher than what was in the resolution. I'm not certain, obviously, as to how their request for proposal was written. So as these numbers keep climbing, I'm wondering if the proposals that were sent back to the county may be or would have been different if the companies that presented those proposals knew that the number was actually going to be higher than what you saw in the resolution. In other words, would they have thought, hey, this is going to be a nice job for the next couple of years, so I'm going to cut my numbers down a little bit in order to get this, because it seems like the numbers are climbing. Mr. Chairman, this is Roger. Mr. Fonstock. As a, a part of the procurement process, purchasing did this as a, a qualifications-based selection. Okay. It's not based on uh, price. So these were okay. evaluations based on certain criteria for their qualifications to do the work. So there were no price proposals. Okay, thank you, Roger. And that answers that question. Correct. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Good question though, Mr. Mr. Brown. So again, I have the, the uh, motion to rescind and a second on the floor. Any? But you should qual I'll qualify, rescind the motion as, as amended, correct? And do rescind the, what, okay. Well, it was, so not, it was not amended, it was just with we, consensus. We, yeah. I think the Seven. chairman is elected to just, to handle them as two, which is probably advisable. So we're just vote, we're, we're, we're just rescinding <laughs> and then there'll be a motion to and table. We'll, is that what I understand? Well, then we'll move and then we'll, we'll table. I don't, okay. I'm not sure we can rescind and table the same thing. I think because the, the tabling requires no, no discussion. Right. I, I think you're correct. Company, think. Well taken point. Chris. Mm -hmm. Let's vote on this. So yep. I'm going to ask for the roll call to rescind this and then we'll, we'll readdress this and, and start again. Mr. Yes. Mr. Chairman roll call. Allen. I'm sorry. Ms. Allen. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, butt in for a second. Uh, Mr. Allen said that he was deferring a couple of capital projects until an architect engineering team was selected, and then he would assign those projects to whoever was selected uh, as the best candidate for that particular project. So my question for Mr. Allen was, can he also defer for another month uh, those projects? Good question, Mrs. Allen. Uh, I, I firmly and comfortably believe I can do that. Those deferred projects are the uh, demolitions out at the Fabian property. Uh, those uh, operational units, such as building management and the sheriff's department's uh, maintenance uh, team, will not be moving out there until late March, early April at this time. So we have plenty of time. And so and once you know. once they're vacated. It, does the demolition and cleanup need to happen? Yes, but it's not time critical to me. Okay, I think you also mentioned the clerk's roof. Yes. And you, you can wait on that as well. I, I'm comfortable with that as well. Thank you. Thanks, yes, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, good questions. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Okay, so this is then a motion to rescind that the resolution. Roll call, please. Foreman? Yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. I'll entertain a motion to pass the very same thing where you send it. You know, that sounds weird. Well, not, now we're going to table no. the. Well, we have to we have to we have to have a motion. We have to bring the motion. We have to bring it to the table because we just rescinded it, right? So we have to start again, and I ha I need a motion and a second, and then we'll table it. Well, we have a motion. We can't we just we can move the table before we move to approve? Yeah, I thought we, re it's, I thought we rescinded. It's on your agenda as an action item, so you can move to table it. 
to next month. Oh, without without a motion. Correct. Okay. Well, then I'll entertain a motion to table this discussion for 30 days, or or actually to our next scheduled Which uh, be March administration 10th. meeting. Which would be, I'll, I'll move to table this to the next monthly meeting at Mar of March 10th. On March 10th. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Moves, second? To have a second. To have a second. Any discussion? No discussion. <laughs> or else, huh? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a, a motion to table has no discussion. Oh, that's yes. right. Thanks. Right. Excuse me. Got carried away. In that case, we're tabling this. No discussion. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Roll call, please. Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Yes. Fraz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Thank you. Woohoo! <laughs> that was a we long ways to go to get nowhere. I will never <laughs> think out loud again. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll be re revisiting those uh, uh, items. Uh, in a month, and we'll have an update from Mr. Allen. Yes, sir. And Mr. Allen, now that you have this extra time, I expect those pictures to include the raccoons out in the other place. <laughs> Could you say that again? I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Mark, I, Mark, I have pictures of raccoon residue, but not the actual raccoon. <laughs> Mark wants now, pictures okay. of the raccoons. Okay, now. Where's my gavel when I need it? Yes. <laughs> Okay, item 10, new business. You have a short synopsis of something for, Mr. for us, Mr. Allen. Yes, yes, sir. Um, as we discussed, I have a little update for you, Mr. Chair, and the committee. And without going into great detail, you, uh, as you know, building management has been looking for uh, options for building a, in reference to COVID safety and safety concerns in general. Uh, without going into great detail, we had a little incident this week, um, which caused a lot of rethinking and uh, by many parties. So what I'm going to let uh, you know is I'm going to move forward with um, looking at a bid A for the building uh, life, safe, life safety and security renovations and a optional bid B for a vestibule on this facility. I'm, so that what I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get clear actual pricing for this work rather than estimates. And that way we're better informed on how we'll proceed moving forward. So that's a security item that relates to building A. Building A only. Okay. Excellent. We definitely, you know, not that we never had a need. I was not saying that, but we definitely, in lieu of recent events, definitely need to, to, to look at this a lot closer. I believe we discussed this earlier when it came to the, uh, in other, maybe this committee or other committees with the, uh, the sheriff out front mm -hmm. and being our security. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, you're losing your mic. Mic, please. Sorry, lean forward. Lean forward. So we discussed this previously, and uh, as far as security of the building, a, a little bit. Um, and so Mr. Allen is suggesting a proposal to um, review the vestibule and the building in in total, or separately, but the entire, each one of those with a project and bid prices as suggestions to bring forth to this committee for our consideration. Yes, sir. This is not an action item. This is something that. And, and these projects are not currently on the previously discussed uh, capital projects list. When that was developed uh, a year or so ago, that this was not the current situation to be considered at that time. So just a heads up that this is something we'll be discussing in the future. Yes, sir. Okay. No surprises. That's yeah, that's good. No surprises. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Any questions? Any questions or comments for Mr. Allen? All right. Any old business? And I have a motion to place the reports on file. Ford moves. Berman second. Was it Ford and Berman? <laughs> Thank Ford you, Drew. And Berman. It was Gums and Ford, I think. I'll Never take that. Works. Everybody keeps talking. We'll get it. All right. Roll call, please. Berman? Berman, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Yes. Fraz? Fraz, yes. Thumbs? <laughs> yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Having too much fun, Michelle. 
Well, have you looked at bras lately? <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, kind of small. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the culprit really right there, again. right? Now we're talking. Yeah, you haven't. Yeah, you haven't seen anything. Do you see what they, what they leave behind, <laughs> in a building? Okay. Thank you very much for that contribution, Mr. Froz. On that happy You're note, welcome. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So move so forward. Board. Everybody Come moves. <laughs> All in favor, Berman. Aye. 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 Have a good day, guys.